welcome to the Wealth Stream podcast. The team at Hightower Great Lakes share their insights and passions for empowering their clients to live their best life. In this energetic podcast, we will take you on a journey to help you navigate your financial future, overcome life's challenges to reach your financial goals, and find the financial clarity you've been searching for. Let's explore the downstream impact of your wealth and what it means to you, your family, and your community to live greater. Hello and welcome to The Wealth Stream with Tim Scannell from Hightower Great Lakes. Good morning, Tim. How are you been? Uh, you know, pretty good. Just Father's Day was this past weekend and I'm um, feeling pretty good. I had a really nice weekend. How about yourself? Ah, me too. It's great being a dad. You know, it, it's fun. Sometimes it's just stressful, but you know, there are a few times during the year that it just really just kind of clicks together. And yesterday was one of those days and it sounds like it was for you too. So that's great. Yeah. I mean, there's parts of that job description I didn't know about before I signed up for that job, but um, I'll tell you what, yeah. it's it's all worked out great. Yes. Yeah. So yeah very that job description would have been volumes, right? I mean, that's just a huge <laughs> job description. Speaking of job description, I know your job description and your job description on this podcast is to educate and teach, but I don't know what we're talking about today. So what are you talking about? Well, today we want to talk about three, three critical wealth planning mistakes that I see family business owners make. And I thought I'd take you down uh, memory lane first, if you don't mind, just for oh, a few man. minutes to yeah, kind of give you some had... feel for why it's important to me. Yeah, I wish I had that sound effect, the, the, not the gong, but the little chimes. You know, we're going down memory lane, like, okay, montage <laughs> okay. to the past. Exactly. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like, <laughs> anyway, I don't think I ever told you, but I worked as a CPA, a certified financial planner, financial mm -hmm. advisor, really in a number of different positions in the first 10 years of my career. And I was just kind of trying to find a model that worked. <clears throat> and I remember specifically, it was like right around 1995, just because I can always place my dates with <laughs> when my kids were born and how mm -hmm. old they were. But I thought I came to the realization that I really can't provide everything the client needs. And I remember thinking, well, God, I should know that that's not true. And I'm not sure that's true. And I'm not sure why I ever thought I could. But I concluded after about 10 years that I really needed to be part of a group of professionals. I needed to really collaborate more because doing my own thing with my clients wasn't really, although I was trying to do it all, I really couldn't. So like many of the listeners, you know, my clients had to proactively reach out to me, reach out to the CPA, the attorney, mm -hmm. the insurance agent, the investment. That costs a lot of time and money to do that. And like many of the listeners, my clients were not making the best, I would call them integrated. There's probably a better word for it. I've told you in the past, I send stuff to my wife, Nancy, and it always comes back sounding better, but <laughs> they weren't making these integrated decisions. Like maybe your CPA is doing one thing and the mm -hmm. attorney is doing another. And I found that many of my clients, like some of the listeners, probably their plans, their legal accounting, retirement, and other plans just weren't being kept current because there just wasn't enough communication among the advisors. And as a result, results, mistakes were made. So I, I was at a conference that year, and I remember it because it was the first year that I went to this one conference, and I was talking to a consultant, and he said, Tim, what if there's a, a better way to do it? What if uh, a team of advisors, you know, instead of the client reaching out, the team re proactively has a process to reach out to the client and making sure that they're making smart decisions about their money and that all mm -hmm. the advisors are making consistent recommendations. And so I went on this I would call it like a long journey. It was actually a five, seven year journey where I was looking for that model where maybe I could collaborate better. And I made a lot of mistakes and it took me a lot of time. And I eventually came to the conclusion that I couldn't find that solution. So I created one, basically. I took the best of what I learned from investment, insurance, banking, those transaction models. And what I learned from the CPA, attorney, and CFP, more fiduciary models, and I try to combine that to create a solution where I built for business owners that I work with. And as a result of that you know, journey, as I sit here now, and for the last several years doing podcasts with you, Eric, work is, has become optional for me. And, and I love guiding my clients every day to help them to their, what I call their work optional life point in time. So that instead of my clients proactively reaching out individually to their CPA, their attorney, their insurance agent, we're collaborating. We're all, you know, as a process, reaching out to them and making sure that we know what their priorities are. And instead of clients worrying about maybe missing opportunities or making mistakes, you know, we as a group stress test their plans each year. And instead of worrying if their plans are responding to current rule changes, like we have a lot of clients asking us now the proposed Biden tax changes, for example, mm -hmm. you know, regulatory 
uh, laws and rules always change with each administration. I think clients have a much more of a better peace of mind knowing that they're on track for success and their group of professionals is working for them. So I kind of came to believe that growing and owning your business doesn't mean that your business owns you. And this is what a lot of clients tell me that they feel yeah. like the business owns them and to some extent holds them prisoner. And I think what we try to do is help clients work smarter with their team of professionals so that they can keep more of their hard earned money and get to a point where work is optional. So what I thought I'd do today, Eric, is that's kind of a long introduction, but talk about, you know, to illustrate the benefit, I think, of working with a great professional team, what we call like a virtual family office, is to talk about three critical wealth planning mistakes that I've seen family business owners make. And it hopes that I can help the audience avoid some of these mistakes also. So what do you yeah. think about that, Eric? Tim, I think that's fantastic. I think that every business owner, we make mistakes. I'm a business owner, and I would love to avoid mistakes. So anything that you can teach us, I'm all ears. So where do we start? I, well, I assume number one, right? <laughs> exactly. We always start at one, right? So all right. Sounds good. The first thing I'd like to cover is what I call the problem created by working with the wrong planner. And I, I made a, I created a podcast. It was episode 46. I think it was back in August of 2020. And we called it Finding Your Advisor Glass Slipper. And really in that podcast, I discussed the importance of, you know, the diff four different kinds of advisors and finding one that fits your goals. So I'm not going to delve too into far into that. And just I'll just reference the listener to go listen to that podcast. Or we also have a, a video on our website that covers the same topic so they can see it there. But I just wanted to talk about the, the mistakes I've seen by working with the wrong planner. And what I'm talking about is that Family businesses and families are very complex. That's the, an understatement, right? And I think many advisors approach the family business from one vantage point of their own expertise, their own set of strategies. So the lawyer might have specialties. You know, Eric, you've probably worked with attorneys, and they're very, very specialized. There's oh, yeah. you know, real estate or family law, et cetera. And they're going to come at the come at it with their own point of view and CPAs same way. They're going to focus on taxes and insurance agents, the life insurance, disability, long-term care. These are all super important products, but oftentimes you'll get these advisors who are really more product driven and they're trying to, you know, create a solution using their product as a solution to most problems. So we try to assist our clients with a team approach to get all involved and for example, like I recently worked with a large manufacturing company, and we did a full discovery, spent about 90 minutes doing that in two separate meetings. And we concluded, or I recommended that, you know, they really needed a better accounting financial analysis team in the company, which really made the process of doing, of working with them and implementing plans, you know, much longer. But I thought it was critical because they just needed they needed better people on their team. And so everyone was telling them, the other advisors, let's engage a business broker. Let's start the process of sale of selling it. And I was saying, well, let's get the right people in the right on the right chairs first so that we can make sure that when you go forward, mm -hmm. you're not it's not gonna take longer, you know, than you would expect. So engaging his team of professionals, talking to us for ninety minutes, I think saved them hundreds of hours because we, you know, because of that process. And that's, so that's really the first thing I would say is the mistake I see people make is just not having the right advisor in their team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, again, like you said, it, it's so critical and sometimes it just takes that outside view. Sometimes it's, it's really, really tough to see when you're in the thick of it. Exactly. I mean, you, we all get bias, right? And, yeah. and, and that's the case. And I, but what I, the way I put it is I really try to help people step back maybe and mm -hmm. see things in the forest view and before they start the process. Yep, absolutely. All right, so what's number the second, two? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So the, the second mistake I see a lot of clients make is focusing too much on tax minimization, right? And you might say, well, Tim, you're a CPA, that's goofy. You know, <laughs> you should be all about tax planning, eliminating, reducing taxes, and I am. But it's critical that you don't focus exclusively or too much on tax minimization because I, th there are so many different family member agendas that, that they're complicated and oftentimes they're in different situations. So for example, I have a client that I've worked with for the past year and a half and they have multiple eventual heirs or beneficiaries. Some are in the business, some are not, and they all have very different cash flow needs. You know, like the people in the business are making plenty of income. They don't necessarily, they're focused on tax planning. But some of the beneficiaries outside of the business, they're not in the same tax bracket and they don't really care as much about tax planning and they're looking more for cash. And mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the kids has a special need 
So there's a special needs trust, and so really tax planning is not even in the top 10 in terms of priority. And some of the strategies that were implemented before we got involved by the CPA have just created a great deal of conflict because mm -hmm. there's just so much more involved in taxes. And again, it just gets to stepping back and collaborating with all of your advisors and just making sure that we're looking at the big picture. And you know, so one of the things we do is we stress test each strategy that before it's implemented to factor in what we call the human element, like all the people involved, because it's, it's not always about the money. It's not always about tax savings. Tax savings are critical, but it's, it shouldn't always be the driver. And that's one of the things we see a little bit too much, especially when we're coming in and helping people exit the business. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, I never thought about that. And that's, again, when the family's in the middle of it, that, how are they even going to know that? And how are they even going to know that they're focusing on tax minimization too much? That's, that's, that's so hard to do if, you, if you're not an expert. Yeah, and unfortunately, they find out usually after the fact, after yeah. strategies have been implemented, and then you got to unwind things, and it just oh boy. becomes very expensive. Got it. Well, that definitely is a, a huge error then. All right, does that take us to number three? That's number three. That's All right. right. So the third biggest mistake I see uh, family business owners make is really fa failing to keep their wealth plans accurate or in current, right? So hmm. this is critical because, as we've talked about, family business owners are really complicated, and they also they typically have a number of legal investment, retirement, business, and other contracts, arrangements, et cetera. It's very, very easy to kind of lose track of the trees when you're focusing on the forest and how things can affect other things. So a year and a half ago, I think or so, it was, um, it was my at a partner at a major law firm reached out to me, not a client, but somebody I knew through my center of influence networking with him, super sharp. And... It was really a very difficult, sad situation where his uh, daughter actually had cancer and she was dying. Mm. And as he was going through her stuff before, just to make sure that everything was in line while she was going through her chemotherapy and all that, came to, came to realize that the life insurance that she had on her, the owner and beneficiary was the ex-husband. And the last thing that he needed to worry about, the last needed thing that the daughter needed to worry about is that these funds that are meant for the, the, da his, the daughter's children, his mm -hmm. grandchildren, would go to the ex-son-in-law. And so we kind of went through this process for him and reached out and did all this tough work with the ex-son-in-law and eventually got it all corrected. She unfortunately did pass, but her grandkids, are, are her kids and, and this attorney's grandkids are going to be cared for. And so th it's just an example of, of one thing where You've got this big picture, this forest, but there's all kinds of moving parts. And we really see that, especially with business owners, where they're very complicated, the third biggest mistake is that they really just don't keep track of all the little pieces, and, and it creates problems, and we've seen those problems. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are three real, really good points, and I know that this is something that you're obviously addressing with all of your clients as you work with them and even the, the people that call you up and say, hey, I'd like to talk about working with you. I'm sure you take a deep dive into these as well. Uh, what else can business owners do? I mean, what can you do for people that are listening to this podcast right now? So the, the most common question I get, Eric, is, Tim, can you help me make you know, smart decisions about my money and avoid these mistakes like these? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. And because what I do is I help business owners every day step back from their business. And this is what I do all the time, plan for a future where work is optional and, and dive into the detail and help them manage the complications of their life and make smart decisions about their money. And so really the next step would be for a listener, if they're interested to call or email me at, you know, tscanell at hightoweradvisors.com. And what we have is a free one hour, what we call it a work optional meeting where we're going to work with them for 90 minutes or so. And I don't know why we call it one hour because it usually <laughs> takes about 90 <laughs> minutes. But, but after that meeting, everyone receives, number one, a, a clear picture of kind of what their work optional life would look like. Mm -hmm. They'll receive a clear picture of any gaps between where they are today and maybe where, that, where their goal is for that work optional life. And then finally, they'll get at least three strategies that will help them get there faster and likely pay less taxes. So, you know, what I would say to the listener is whether you've never thought about setting up a plan, exiting your business, and making sure everything's um, working, or whether you've worked on it a little bit and you just don't haven't gotten the results you wanted, or if you have great advisors and you're far into the process and you just want to make sure you're doing it right, 
because you're only going to get one shot at it, especially when you're talking about exiting your business. We believe we can help you a lot in this. That's fantastic. All right. Well, one more time. Can you give out the contact information? Sure. It's uh, T. Scannell at HightowerAdvisors.com. All right. And Eric, I'll just give you one more quick story because I don't know if I ever told you that I've actually run a marathon. Did you know that? I don't know if I know that or not. <laughs> so Really? Full marathon? Yeah. It, because like, so when I was, when I met Nancy in college, she was running marathons. I had never really run at all. I like to swim. Mm -hmm. um, but in 2003, I decided as a way to connect with Nancy that I would train for a marathon. And in hindsight, I'm sure you're saying, Tim, certainly there's easier ways, you know, <laughs> to connect with Nancy. But I searched in Google, I read books, I talked to a lot of people, and I basically went on this five-year journey, literally, to run, to get trained for and, and finish the Chicago Marathon. And but as I built up the mileage and I started getting injuries, and, and, and I'll tell you just one time I actually was running and I tied the laces too tight, which I didn't know I could do, oh. and I bruised my foot, and I ended up going to a massage therapist, and I'm like, she made me cry. I mean, it was so painful. <laughs> oh, jeez. I know. This is, this, I can't believe I'm admitting this, but <laughs> what was happening was everyone was telling me, like, you got to run five miles a day, and then I found a coach, and the coach said, well, what if you ran three and walked two, and what if you mixed in swimming and you mixed in biking, and and as a result, what if you could run faster with fewer injuries, and I, I said, where do I sign up for that one, you know? Yeah. And that's what I did. And I followed this coach and because I knew I could not get to the finish line by myself and I wasn't going to make running a career. I literally was going to do this, run the Chicago Marathon and then check it off my box, right? Mm -hmm. But I hired a specialist and I hired a coach and and he did get me across the finish line. And I, I think the point of the story, Eric, is I, I think in all of our lives, there's times when there's things we think we can do on our own, but we're just better off hiring specialists that hopefully can get us across the finish line. And there's also things that we don't do every day, but mm -hmm. somebody else does every single day. And nobody's going to get good at creating and implementing a plan to make work optional and to exit the business and because they only do it once in a lifetime. But I do it every day, and I work with a team of advisors that do. Tim, always great information. Thank you so much for having the podcast today and letting me be a part of it. I appreciate everything you do for our audience. Oh, thank you very much. No, I love doing it. I love meeting with the clients. I love helping solve the puzzles. I really yeah. enjoy seeing the look on their face when the stress is relieved and when they know they work is optional. They can either go to work and keep working or not. So yeah. it's a beautiful thing. I love the industry. Yeah, that sounds like a beautiful thing. I'll get there one of these days. <laughs> Again, Tim, <laughs> thank you for you. your oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> I thank you for your time. And of course, our last thank you always goes to the listening audience. Thank you for so much for tuning in and listening to the Wall Stream Podcast with Tim Scannell. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Tim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hightower Great Lakes, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealth Stream Podcast. We hope you gained some valuable insight that you can apply to your life and share with others. Please don't forget to subscribe below to be notified when new episodes become available. And don't forget to live greater. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hightower Great Lakes. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Hightower Great Lakes is a group of investment professionals registered with Hightower Securities LLC, member FINRA and SIPC, and with Hightower Advisors LLC, a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities LLC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors LLC. 